does gear matter or rather how much does it matter for wildlife photography and I think my views have changed a little bit on this over the last couple of years so I'm going to share them with you in this video. Now of course there's so many things that make a difference, there's a lot of debate on both sides but I'd say if there's one thing that probably matters the most then it is the lens in that for wildlife photography you're going to have to have a reasonable focal length uh, and that's because your subject can often be quite small or it can be further away or perhaps a combination of both of those things. Now I'm not saying that you have to go out and buy the biggest bazooka lens that you can find uh, but I am saying if you're just using a 50mm standard lens, maybe even a 100 millimeters or perhaps a small compact camera uh, then it's probably not going to cut it. Now I've been using Canon full frame for a long time and if you're doing similar then I definitely suggest a minimum focal length of 300 millimeters preferably 400 millimeters or more. Now, how much is your camera and lens actually going to help you to take better wildlife pictures? Well, I think there's a few things that do matter, such as autofocus system, uh, being able to take rapid multiple frames, and also the ability to change things really quickly when you're out in the field. But everyone's journey is going to be different. So how important are these things? Well, I'm going to look at it as if you're a complete beginner, you're just getting started, but in two completely different ways. Now, the first way is that you go out and you buy high-end equipment to avoid too much frustration. Now, if you're just constantly getting frustrated with your gear, uh, you're not getting the results that you're after, then it's just gonna, you're not gonna enjoy it, it's gonna hinder your growth, and you might not wanna pursue it, you might stop taking pictures altogether. And also, because at least in theory, you can get the best possible image quality from your equipment, you're less likely to be second-guessing that gear. Uh, you know, is it the camera, is it you? It's more likely to be down to user error, which is something you can fix. The second way is that you go for budget gear. You start with budget gear, and yes, this can be frustrating at times, uh, but I think if you go down this route, then you're more likely to learn things in depth, uh, some of the technical aspects, simply because you have to do that in order to get the most out of that equipment. And when you are faced with a difficult situation out in the field, later down the road, then I think you're gonna cope really well with that because of what you've learnt. And also when hopefully you get to upgrade to better equipment later on, I just think you're gonna be an even better photographer because you've done that groundwork and you've learnt the skills. To some extent, I think the gear that you're going to use is going to depend on your goals. And everyone's going to be different here. What's high quality to one person may not be to another. Everything is subjective. And remember that photography is supposed to be about fun. It's supposed to be enjoying yourself. So think about what do you enjoy the most? You know, what do you really, really enjoy in your wildlife photography? Now, maybe it's the fact that you can fill the frame entirely with your subject. Uh, perhaps it's you get a lot out of going on long hikes unhindered with a nice light combo. Uh, maybe it's the fact that you can just show incredible detail in your images. Now, what do you do with your images? Do you like to share your images? I think this is a big consideration when it comes to sheer image quality. For example, if you like to get some prints made, uh, get some of your photos printed up nice and big, then it might matter a little bit more in terms of the quality, the megapixels, maybe dynamic range and color rendition. Uh, but if all you ever do is share your images online in some way, then it may not be as important. So if you're just sharing your images in terms of social media, maybe on some forums, maybe an email, then it's very difficult to tell the actual quality, particularly the sharpness. So in that case, the image quality might not be as important to you you. you might just enjoy the fact that you can share your experiences with other people. I do think there's a situation where equipment really does matter and that's where you're pushing boundaries. So you're trying to do something that's more extreme and more difficult to capture. And that could include really high speed action shots. Now in this image here of a San Martin leaving its nest uh, taken years ago on a Canon 20D, uh, this was just incredibly difficult. The camera's frame rate wasn't fantastic and it just didn't really have the ability to nail this kind of image. So if I was to shoot that again, with the gear I've got, I'd have a much better chance of success. So today, particularly with the, the high frame rates, including the electronic shutter, uh, you've just a better chance of getting these type of images. 
And even if you want to use uh, Pro Capture, maybe if you're on Olympus, for example, that can increase your chances even more. If you want to learn about Pro Capture, then click on the link below by fellow YouTuber and friend Espen Helland. So, do you necessarily need that capability on your camera if you're photographing a resting animal or a perched bird? Well, probably not. But if you've got a bird flying very fast towards you, straight towards the camera, then you probably need quite an advanced autofocus system. Perhaps you want to push the boundaries in terms of conditions maybe you're taking the camera somewhere very cold in that situation you might actually be better with a more robust DSLR that's better on batteries Now, obviously you're not gonna be shooting at extreme ends of the spectrum all the time. So have a think about how you commonly use your camera for wildlife photography. Maybe you do a lot of hide work where things are more set up, you're already closer to the subject. In that situation, you probably need to worry less about really high megapixels. You can already get that good detail simply from being a bit closer. Well, you might be more of an opportunistic shooter. You like to go out for walks, have your camera with you, and just shoot whatever you see. Now, in that situation, your subject is likely to be a bit further away so you might benefit from a camera with greater megapixels that means afterwards you can zoom in onto the image and crop it down and fill the frame a bit more but if you've got those greater megapixels to work with then it's going to help to maintain the quality there are so many factors when it comes to choosing equipment if you do want some ideas about choosing the best gear for you then check this video up on the screen thanks very much for watching i'll see you next time